I want to invite you to tell Jesus. You know, finding that person in your life who is your really go-to person, the person that you could tell the worst of yourself to. <laughs> you can share the broken pieces of your life with and then when they're finished listening, they know how to take all those broken pieces and create a mosaic of something that is beautiful and learning that is deep. Finding that kind of person in your life is something really beautiful and, and nothing of no small consequence. And when you read the gospel stories, the gospel stories are written from the perspective of people who knew who they were when Jesus found them and when Jesus met them and were conscious of, of who they had become because he had met them. The gospel story are the stories of life and the complexity of life, the story of loss and of gain, of sickness, of death, of rejection, of fear, of forgiveness, of, of love, of hate. And at the center of all of those conversations you find in the gospel story, Jesus is sitting at the center of all of those stories. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to understand. Jesus engaged the lives of people. He engaged the lives of people so that he could speak to the souls of people. Jesus understood that to, to be fully human is to fully engage people in that space of life. Think about it. People became conscious of the fact that God had put on human flesh again. And in the Gospels, that's what you see. God has put on human flesh again and he's walking. He's walking in and amongst people every day. He's hearing them, he's, he's understanding them. He's understanding by his own life what it means to be fully human and engage in our space. Beautiful conversations, heartfelt conversations. Jesus is at the center of them and that's the beauty of the gospel stories. I remember when I was a theology student coming fresh from um, seminary and I would try to, um, I would try to uh, uh, blow my mom's mind blow her mind with all the stuff that I had discovered um, theologically and that I was sitting in a class that was blowing my mind. I wanted to blow her mind. But my mom is a 94 year old saint. She's 94 now. And my mom had learned to have personal conversations with Jesus. My mom had learned to have real and, and heartfelt and lived experience conversations with Jesus Christ. And she always used to ask me, Eddie, do you have a faith that works? And she wasn't um, dismissing or belittling anything that I had learned. She was proud of me for learning it and excited with me for the things that I knew. But what she was trying to tell me is that Jesus is not a module. Jesus is not uh, a theological subject. Jesus is a living God. He's a living person. And he is so deep that you have to go and study theology to make sense of his conversations. His conversations are so deep that they've turned them into theological modules, but don't lose the heart of the person at the center of the, con of the conversation. You know, the heart of all human relationships is found in communication and conversation. And to be fully human, to be fully human is to understand that. And the Bible is a beautiful testimony to the kind of conversationalist God is. Because you see that in Jesus. In Jesus, you understand that God is fully interested in our conversations. He, he not only hears us, he listens to us. He listens to all our conversations. The things that we think are simple and the things that we think are complex. What we think is mundane and won't even interest him. He listens to all of those. He listens to us when we are in that space where we don't understand what is taking place in life, like where we find ourselves now with COVID-19. He understands us when, like those disciples, we walk the Emmaus road of our shattered dreams and, and our expanded and disbanded hopes. He, he hears us when we are uh, in that space where we don't even know how to pray or speak. And we hope that this song or this little scribble that we write down can be heard and it could be understood. Jesus reminds humanity that conversation is at the heart of communication. And in that communication, we have to be fully present and fully human. So not all the conversations 
are looked for conversations, but they are all needed conversations. The conversations that are pleasant and unpleasant, the conversations that are looked for and unlooked for, the conversations that are with us and the conversations that are about us. All of those conversations are the conversations that we have to engage in in order to understand each other. But those are also the conversations that we have to engage in with God so that we can be fully known and we can be fully understood. That to see Jesus engage in conversation with humanity is to understand that God is forever seeking to be present with us. So tell Jesus, because he sees, he hears, he listens, he knows. That, that, that's what he said to Moses at the burning bush. He said, I see them, I hear them, I know them, I have come down. The Apostle Paul called the entrance of Jesus into the human story, the fullness of time. And maybe for some of you, you have come as far as you're going to go with some of the things that you have, that you carry. Maybe for you, it is the fullness of time to begin to speak. Maybe for you, it is the fullness of time to begin to release. In this space that we find ourselves in, when we all pause, tell Jesus, tell Jesus.